Jesus has been exalted to work now. He's sitting, but in the kingdom, sitting is a ruling and a judging position. In a teaching position. Jesus is doing something now. He's building the church now. He's mediating the covenant now. He's feeding, sustaining, and causing his people to triumph now. Why is all of this taking place? Is it just to ensure your safety and this sort of thing? Well, that's, that's involved. Is it just so that you might be fat and flourishing, as the prophet said? Well, that's, that's involved. But Jesus is working this way now because for you to be saved, that's what he has to do. He has to continue the work. The work wasn't finished. He was just finished the work he done on earth was finished. But that was the smallest part of his work. <laughs> When he said, it is finished, mm -hmm. people say, the finished work of Jesus. They don't have any idea what they're talking about when they say that, but that's the kind of a phrase they picked up on. It's not in, it's not in the Bible. When Jesus said, it is finished. He met the purpose of which I came to lay down my life. That's, that's done now. Yeah, I'm not going to lay down my life anymore. Yes, I'm not going to humble myself anymore. I'm not going to stoop down anymore. Yeah. From this place on, people got to come up. Yeah. Amen. Now, you'd be surprised how many people would like Jesus to come down again, yeah. humble himself again, overlook this and overlook that. No, no. We're the ones that had to come up. And the work he's doing now Amen. guarantees that we can. Yes. Now, if the church is not conducting itself as God has ordained that they should, they really don't have a need for Christ. Yet really, if you can see it, it sounds harsh, but sometimes you have to say things like this. If people don't know what God is doing and they're not involved in what God is doing, they've got no right to come to God and ask anything. It's out of order. God set a purpose in motion and if people are not part of that purpose yeah. there's no reason for Jesus because that's exclusively what he's doing according to his will according mm -hmm. to his will then they'll have their petitions now the long too long the church has suffered from institutionalism and organizationalism, both of which are dead, spiritually dead, and it suffered from it very much. Now in this lesson we're going to see that everyone in the body of Christ is involved and none of them are excluded. And it's like is a, for, in the modern church, this like is a foreign thought. I mean they cannot recognize everybody's saved, I mean, they can understand everybody delivered, but they they can't even, th listen brethren, people, normal Christians can't even think this way. They can't even think of the entire body being involved in doing something for Christ, through Christ, and by His grace. They can't even think this way. They've adapted to a sort of a one person and at most a handful of people do most of the things. <laughs> seems if they do think about that, they're thinking about them ministering to the ungodly and unbelieving out there. Somewhere. Right. There's yeah. no concept of what you're talking about within the body. That's right. And the body building itself up in love. And they do, a, I'll just speak vulgarly, they do a stinking job of ministering to other people of any kind. Yeah, right. You can't even talk about ministers without them thinking about the preacher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's even shown when the. Uh, when you minister to the ungodly, they, they after if the ungodly does become baptized, they don't follow up with them. Yeah. They just mm -hmm. say, okay, now i got to go on to another one. Yeah, that's because that's the doctrine. The doctrine is that the main thing is to get them in. That's, that's, that's what's being taught. Yeah, that's right. 
That's the main. It's the work of the church is so you get them in. They forget that they're not the ones that get them in. God draws them to Jesus and he puts them in. An unedified <coughs> church. This is if if the church was edified, it would it would That's have right. a better doctrine. That's right, amen. All right, here's the text we're looking at, verse seven. This is after he's listed all the one things. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. So now it's we ought to expect now that this entire body is going to be like in some way one and single, focused. Yeah. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Of course, that doesn't mean anything if you haven't taken hold of what he has <laughs> said before. See, these are verses they don't make sense to the average professing Christian. To every one of us is given grace. They don't have any idea. Well, they think that means salvation. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about salvation here. We're saved by grace, but that's that's uh, there's other things grace does, and we're going to deal with the other things now. He's not talking about how you got in, how your sins got forgiven. That's not the subject here. To everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, when it comes to the body of Christ, the, the whole of it is emphasize very much as compared to you, you, and you. See, the, the whole thing is emphasized. Church, of course, is a whole word. Words like everyone are used frequently in the epistles. Or words like all in reference to the body. Or words like one another. Or words like whole, the whole family the whole church. These are all terms that are employed in Scripture to teach us that our thinking has to be adjusted at some point to forget about ourself and think of the whole. Now the concept of a body is of course exclusively taught by Paul and it's because it was revealed to him. This was revealed to him. It includes the matter of working together for a common objective. Not working together where everybody contributes money to the cause. We talk about working together. Christ's body, the church, is called the body in Ephesians no less than nine times. It refers to the body. Two times it refers to the the body as the Jew and the Gentile formed one body. The rest of the times it's the individual members. Now the idea of a body includes the matter of working together. That's part of the concept of a body. A body isn't like some piece of plastic or a piece of stone. It's a, it's a living thing that works. That's the concept of a body. When God made Adam's body the dust of the earth, it was a single unit with many functional parts. Some were it unseen, some were seen. Yeah. He, he, he taught us what a body, when he, so that when he used the word body, we'd get the picture of what he's talking about. The body's not made up of clones. Yeah, that's right. See, to have sectarianism, you've got to have clones. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that, can't you? You can't be a Baptist and be thinking like a Methodist. I mean, everybody knows this. You can't be in the Christian church and think like a Baptist. You have to be a clone to be a sectarian. The only catch is God isn't making clones. <laughs> Where everybody's the same. It would be like God making a body that was just just eyes, that's all it was. By divine intent, God would create a people who would be united, work together, and serve a specific purpose. The head of the body, 
He's going to determine the abilities and direction of the body and as the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now, in order to uh, confirm that this was something that could not be carried out by men, <clears throat> God demonstrated this first. You cannot, men cannot make a body of people. Particularly when it has to do with, with God. Now he said he chose for himself a people, the Jews. He created them and he chose them. They qualified as a group, but not as individuals. <laughs> Although their creator was God, they resisted him. They didn't prefer him. They exalted their own interests above his. Even though he gave them explicit and implicit instructions, gave them a good law and an excellent leader who was faithful in all of his house, yet they proved to be stubborn, rebellious, stiff-necked, and were appropriately described as those who resisted the Holy Spirit. They weren't a body. You, you see that? They were a people, they weren't a body. Yeah. Even though they were given every conceivable advantage. See, God delivered them, fed them, led them, protected them, taught them by the prophets, caused them to triumph over their enemies. Yet they were never able to work together. In fact, they fought each other. And you read the Kings and the Chronicles, you'll find the tribes fighting each other. And Israel would go to war against Judah, you know, and they'd fight. They couldn't work. To, they couldn't work together because God's designed man, so that just can't happen when it comes to being under God. Can't work together. Why did the record there in Judges? Every oh, man did what was right in his own right. sight. See? And that was the generations right after Joshua and Moses. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this this is among a chosen people that were given all kind of advantages. So if it's just yeah. a matter of let's all listen up now, what the requirements are, let's get out there and let's do what we're told. If it was just that simple, data data yeah. done it. But they had all the advantages, a lot more than any man could give. Yes. But they were not a body. As individuals in Israel, the mass of people were unknown. The only thing you know about Israel, some of the great people were among them. They'd be named. Otherwise, you have no idea. Specific counts aren't even given of them. They just got to get an idea about where it was. But they weren't known. Everybody wasn't known by name on earth. This is just not how they weren't a body. Most of the people remained anonymous. Okay. Well, some people think in the church it's the same way, but it's not. Yeah, that's right. It's not the same way. We are, as it is written, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Yeah, so yeah. there you are. Yeah. It's a whole different situation. Yeah. This wasn't the way it was with Israel. They weren't members of a body and members in particular. They, they weren't members in particular. They were just a blob of people. As all they were. No distinction. Now we read <laughs> of something that's given to every one of us. See, tutelage wasn't given to every Israelite, except it came through some other Israelite. But God didn't say, take them one by one, say, one by one, come up Sinai and I'll teach you. That's right. <laughs> it's not the way it was. In fact, Moses didn't go from tent to tent, tent to tent. You want to hear Moses? You had to get where Moses was. That's right. That's what happened. Now, as I say, you read about something given to every one of us. It's something that at the dispensing level is for each individual with none being left out. So when he dispensed the grace we're talking about, when he dispensed it, nobody was left out. Now what each person is given from the practical point of view is is what they do. It's what they do. 
that makes them unique. Not what they are, what they do. The apostles were unique because of what they did. They weren't just called apostles and that was it. They did something. And they received the grace to do it. Now here, I want to mention this again. That this is a totally foreign concept in the modern church. For many, they can get no further. When they talked about together, they can get no further than a praise service. That's as far as they can go with this idea. Amen. Where all the people sing together. And they don't do too well at it either. Now it can be expressed that oneness is expressed in singing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's expressed much in unison singing. Everybody's singing the melody. Someone made this observation, I think it was a Gloria Gaither, that in the singing of parts you have a picture of the diversity in the body working together for one thing, the very singing of the parts. But you rule that out and that singing really isn't a display of unity, working to every part. You can no more have a body of Christ with everyone being identical than you can have a human body that's comprised of eyes. Yeah, right. Or a human body is just a stack of little toes. Mm -hmm. Would you call that a body? No. Yeah, why do people call a church a body that only has one person that talks? Why? How does anyone dare to call that a body? Yeah. It's not a body. It's not what God created. We have it right here in this text. To every one of us is given. Well, what are we given? We're given grace. Other, uh, it's the past. Here it says, is given grace. Every one of us is given grace. Other versions say grace was given. Has been given, the NIV. God's favor has been given. New Living Translation says, given each one of us a special gift. That's pretty good. Now, well, is the word is right or is the word was right? Is it is or was? Is given, was given. Well, both are right. The idea is, it is given means you still got what was given. <laughs> That's what is given means. Is given means it, it just not pouring it out continue. It means it is given and it stays. Now the same idea is taught in 1 John 5 20. We said we know the Son of God is come. Some versions say has come. Is come and has given us an understanding. The idea is he is come and he stayed. That's the idea. So the word is is proper. Takes you back to when it was initiated. He gave the grace. He didn't call it back after he gave it. You kept it. When was the grace given? It was given to you when you entered. You got this grace and you were born again. Amen. When you started out. This is not speaking of a grace that was dispensed at some later time when you matured a little bit and then you got the grace. Oh, you got the grace. This grace we're talking about here was given when you came in. The apostles were apostles from day one. They got that grace. The use of the gift may come at some later time, but the distribution of the gift, you got it when you came in. Now that we're going to establish that truth. And this establishes that everyone is involved in the distribution of something that profits everybody. Everyone got something that profits everybody. Here's a word from 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit, is when the thing is worked, mm -hmm. is given to every man to profit with all. Oh, yeah. The word with all means to profit everyone mm -hmm. or the whole body. Everyone got a unique gift. When he, when he come into Christ, everyone got this. To everyone is given grace. That's, that's, that's the thing he's teaching. This, at this point, this is a unique gift. 
this take the nature of grace is not the point. Merited, unmerited, and all that. That's not even the point here. It's, it is the ability that it grants that is the point. The ability is not a natural endowment. It's not that God said, oh, that person is very talented. I want to use him. That's not how this is. <laughs> God will use people, uses people. He is gifted with the ability to do what he sends them to do. Grace is given to every person. Now, Peter wrote about this. He said, um, 1 Peter 4.10, As every man hath received the gift, that's to say that every man is given grace, that's the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. How are you going to use this grace? Down at the bar, down at Walmart, or what? One another. Mm -hmm. Body ministries. Amen. If any man, he gives you some examples. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Amen. Tell the people what God said. Be a spokesman for God, not for your institution. Yes. If any man minister, let him do so as of the ability God gives. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. So God's glorified by the proper use of what he gives. Amen. Amen. He's not glorified if what he gives is not properly used. Amen. Then it doesn't make any difference how many praise services you have. Yeah. Yeah. So we see that we're saved by grace and gifted by grace at the same time. <clears throat> now, Unlike natural gifts, these gifts are distributed by the grace of God, not by nature. You're not born. The natural skills, just like you're born, a person's born with them. So some children, by the time they're eight, they know more than the teachers know because they are gifted. When they were born, naturally gifted. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about spiritual giftedness. Now here's the unique thing about the people that are gifted can work together in Christ. Mm -hmm. This isn't true though, in the world this isn't true. You get a carpenter and a jeweler and you know they don't work together. <laughs> they don't work together too well. You get a mathematician and a cattleman, they're both gifted but they can't. They don't work together. Cattlemen got to work with cattlemen. Jewelers have to work with jewelers. That's the way it is. But see in Christ the gifts work Together, because they've been distributed by the grace of God, he's, he's the one that distributed this. The purpose is get the body working together because no member of the body is big enough to contain what I have to give. Amen. I have more to give a little than a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. Yes? The fact that, that these different gifts are being ministered in the body is an evidence of the reality of Christ and His working in His people. Yes, amen. I was thinking about this, you know, you said something about uh, just one person speaking. Well, the, a lot of places they're afraid for anybody but just one person to speak <laughs> because they know they're not unified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so they can't afford to let more than one yes, person sure speak or it disrupts everything. Mm -hmm. If In a lot of places where people are not being led by the Spirit and, and these gifts being given by Christ for His purposes, you would have chaos broke out. Yeah. If, if somebody tried to well, they, they probably wouldn't be doing things like showing mercies and stuff, but but it, there wouldn't be any unit, real yeah. unity to it. Yeah, they it would wind up in, in seditions and, and competitions, and it wouldn't work toward a, 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 a beneficial purpose yeah. for everyone. It would be to exalt one above the other, and it it would it break all down because it's of the flesh. Amen. Otherwise. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's uh, let's take a moment here and distinguish between capacity and aptitude, so we can use these words right. Sometimes they get 
confused. Capacity versus aptitude. Capacity has to do with what you receive. Aptitude has to do with what you express. They're two different things. So, and if your capacity does not have what God intends to fill it with, it'll condemn you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. If you have the capacity to the the ability to do something or, or to contain something that God gives and you and you don't use that capacity for that, you fill it up with some other stuff, God will damn you for that. Oh, well, he will. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And if what he gives you, you don't use, you get damned too. I know that's strong language, but it is a, this is a day we got to have some strong language on this because a lot of it, somebody's been neg negligent of, of their duty because we've got an idle church on our hands and here we're here what we're reading here said there's no such thing as that yeah. Yeah. there's no such thing as a church in which most of the members don't do anything there's no such thing as that the first case you gave of someone being gifted and using it for something else would be something like some of these uh Men who at one time were preachers, yeah, and they, yeah. <laughs> and they just became motivational speakers. That's right. I could name some names. Oh yes, I know what you're saying. And, and they did it openly. They oh, they, yes. they actually became business motivators. Yeah. They went into the business world. Yeah. They left the ministry, went into the business world, made a lot of money. Yeah. And were highly commended, and marketed themselves, and so forth yeah. and so on. They were very successful. I know exactly what you're saying, brother G. It's a serious, serious matter. Serious matter. Yeah, Brother Gibbon, if you take it... Put it on a personal level and say, well, if I've been given the gift to be able to build people up, to, be, to edify them, well, then what right do I have to be absent? I mean, if you, if you take it personal and say, wait a minute, if there's more at stake than me being absent than just me. Say, well, well but I'm busy. Well... Then get unbusy. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 everyone's got to work this out for themselves. But I can remember asking my mom, "Why are you so interested in going so much?" And she, she said, the first reason Christ is there, yeah. and the second, my brother and her are there. Since where, it's what see, she was yeah. a part of it. And so, but but that made an impression on me. You know, I was just young, but that made yeah. an impression that there was this wasn't just going to a building. This was, she was going there for it. She had reason to go. That's there. right. Yes. Now let's, let's postulate something for a moment here. Let's say that a person had received one of these gifts of grace. Mm -hmm. The ability to edify the saints of God were in some way. Yeah. Working together with and for the body. But that person chooses to use his ability in a professional way, such as Brother G just mentioned. Maybe to entertain people. Maybe he could play skillfully on the harp like David. Mm -hmm. And he decides he'd play for the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. Well, I, maybe he'll play the harp skillfully for the Athens, for the philosophers, so they could meditate. Hmm. Going to use it for that. Mm -hmm. All right, has that person been faithful to the giver of the gift? But well, got this question has to be asked. Yeah. Have they? Are they a good steward of the manifold grace of God? Does God give spiritual gifts so people can make money? Or entertain people? Or make a name for themselves? No, he doesn't. Now, if this teaching is true, See, the purpose of gifts is to bring an advantage to the body. Right. If this teaching is true, and the text affirms it does, then the assembly of saints becomes an environment in which these various gifts can be expressed. Amen. That's where he's headed with this. So that is where he's headed with this. He's going to break it down in the rest of this chapter. That's what 
1 Corinthians 12 through 14 deal with spiritual gifts, which are these gifts of grace, are the same thing. Deals with these. It is in the context of an assembly from start to finish. It's in the context of an assembly and then sandwiched in there is 1 Corinthians 13 about love that this whole thing has to be driven by the love that comes from God. All right, let's look at this a little more. To every one of us is given grace. Notice everyone, everyone. Not every man, just everyone. Everyone. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. All right, what's that mean? Well, some of the various versions, here's how they try to work this out. A measure of Christ's gift. As Christ apportioned it. That, that's pretty good. Measure of the giving of Christ, measured by the Christ, Jesus, by the Messiah's bounty, measured out to us by Christ who gave it, in whatever way Christ allotted it. All right, that, that's pretty good. Measured out with the munificence, word munificence means largeness, with the munificence of Christ, that is, he took, a, he took some out of a big supply and gave to you. Everyone received what he wanted to give them. That's fairly good. In proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bounteous gift. Everyone is given grace according to the measure. See, I ever cook has measuring utensils. Determine how they measure stuff out. You got these little bunch of spoons, eighth of a eighth of a spoon, a teaspoon, fourth of a teaspoon, half of a teaspoon, teaspoon, tablespoons. And then they got the, uh, the yes. As you're saying that, it, it just dawned on me. If if you were to, if you're trying to to create something culinarily speaking, and you use the wrong measure, That's right. it messes it up. That's, That's why right. Christ gives right. measures That's of right. things, because exactly it fits right. into what he's yeah. doing in uh, large, That's right. so that it doesn't get too much of this and not enough That's of that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, there's a, there's, a, there's a, a largeness that has to be doled out, but it has to be distributed because there's no container. Yeah. That's right. There's no human container big enough to have it all, so he's got these different contains because some of this has to be in large quantities, some has to be in small quantities, so you, you, that's right, amen. It's not, see, what you can hold isn't the point, because God can make you hold anything. He can, it's, it's what you do, are going, what you have been assigned to do, that is that is what determines the measure. And see, we talk, there's other measures, like a quarter cup, third cup, you know, half cup, full cup, and then really get some big, there's a pint and a quart and a gallon, and you can get up, see, you drop 55 gallon drums, the container varies according to how much of this has been distributed. You have to have, if you try to run your engine on a teaspoon of oil, it, like it won't work. It won't work, you gotta have the right measure. There are some people trying to do gallon work with a teaspoon. <laughs> and it won't work. That's why they feel, so why can't I get anything done? Well, you got this great, you got this little bitty work God gave you to do, and you're trying to do it with a either a whole too much, fill up your crankcase, too much oil, it'll ruin the car. Too little and it won't work. So we got a head that determines the measure. I think if the body of Christ was enlarged, then the, your measures, typically the measures, yeah. you expect the measures to increase. That's in right. Each, in each That's season. right. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. the, the whole body grows, not, not just numerically grows, each vessel, each vessel grows so it can receive more, so it can do more, so the body can grow more, so it can receive more. So they can do more. See, that's that's the that's the strategy. It all starts at your new birth. It starts right there. That's where you get the that's where you get the gift. Yes. Um, I was also concerned that you can't send a two-year-old to bake a cake. You have to be trained before they can. Yes, sir. Yeah, you could, but you'd be disappointed. <laughs> that's right. We're developing this now. 
we're beginning to see a little bit of the the extent of it. The church has, has gotten to a point to where they can't see that the individual <coughs> only has significance as it is part of the body. That's right. But the body is real. The point of the body is Jesus. That's mm -hmm. right. If Amen. you don't see Jesus in the body, the body is useless. Amen. Yeah. Now, let's say, let's say that you've got a church on your hands. And it's just received very little idea about what God's doing, about saving the lost, that's about it. Well, like how many supplies do you need to do that? Okay. How much do you really need to receive from God to do that? Not much. Well, let's say now you're talking about comfort and exhortation and strengthening and bestowing mercy and enlightenment and illumination. Now, all of a sudden, the need for more supplies surfaces. And we have a good piece of news to every one of us has given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ to, to address this situation that no person can really survive on their own unless God has mandated that they be alone. Like John in the Isle of Patmos. That's the exception to the rule. But with the grace of God, the grace itself is abundant. Incidentally, when you use these measures, these measures don't have any effect at all on the supply it came from. So it is with grace. The measure doesn't deplete. Whether it gives a little grace or a abundant grace, it doesn't deplete. The resource remains the same. So it is with grace. Grace itself is abundant and without known limits. It also is effective for what it is intended to do. Whatever grace is intended to do, grace gets done. You can bank on that. In the sense of our text, the amount of grace that is distributed is strictly determined by Jesus Christ. That's one reason why we are not to judge one another. See, that's, you, you can fit that together. That you may, you may have a larger understanding than some people are really capable of having at this point. So you can't judge them. Because the only difference between you and them is grace that's been given you. That's, that's, why, that's the only reason now for the difference. It's not so that you achieved. It's not that you studied more or worked harder. So that's not why. It's the grace that's given that gives the distinction. So it contributes to humility. Amen. Being saved by grace has to do with extricating us or removing us from sin and from the world. The measure of gift of Christ has to do with how we function in the body of Christ so we can be ready when Jesus comes. Because that's the aim. See, that's the aim. When Jesus appears, be ready. Now there are determined, yes, Brother Gene. What you mentioned earlier about the, the only difference between us and someone who doesn't have understanding, I, I understand what you're saying, but there, there is an element of us, uh, what, what was the term that you used, aptitude, there's an element of aptitude. It had, it's been it, given it, to it, yet, but it, it may be that someone has, uh, what do you want to say, uh, uh, quench their appetite. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. That, they, that they were granted grace as oh, well. Oh yes, you're absolutely and right. And they chose not to use it as See, God intended. Here, the assembly, does that exists. There's no question. Yes. Say to our kippus, fulfill your ministry. Yes, See? Yes. The assembly is the environment in which all of those corrective measures are ministered. Yes. They're personal without being personal. You may be administering correction, but yeah. you don't you don't even know you are. That's, right. That's how the body's tempered together. It's not a you me. No, it's not that kind of situation. It's that he works through you, and that as you minister it, there in a in a sense, there's anonymity among the people you're ministering to. You don't know them after the flesh. You're not thinking of them that way. In fact, you may not even know you're ministering to them. But the the assembly is the context where Jesus ministers to the body. Yeah. 
and then each one is accountable. Yeah. That's right. For how they use the That's grace right. that we're given and so forth. I immediately thought of when you when you said that about I, I immediately thought of this this old we're just sinners saved by grace I know. kind of thing. Yeah. And and so we, we there does come a time when there, when when there's a someone needs to be called to account for how they've used the grace That's of right. God. See that. Now, they, there are people just have to, like Ananias and Sapphira, just have to, just to face face on. Mm -hmm. That Now, that's the lesser desirable. Mm -hmm. A person should be able to be corrected without being done so by name and this sort of thing, but some, sometimes it does have to, you just have to call them out and tell what it is. But if you're sensitive, you'll find some rough edges being knocked off. Yeah. Amen. You're among God's people. And the people who do it, they won't be proud because they don't know they did it. <laughs> but if you're obstinate, now there, as Brother Gina said, if you're obstinate, now there's other measures are taken to address that. <laughs> now our particular roles in the body of Christ are determined by the amount of grace that we have been given, which is determined by Christ Jesus. So while the grace of God determines what a person has chosen to do, faith is the means through which the grace becomes profitable. Otherwise, it's like, I don't think of grace as just sitting in the vessel, but grace doesn't mean anything if it's not, faith doesn't function with it. It's by grace, through faith, see? That's what makes it operable. Now for this reason, I... Paul writing to the Romans, instead of talking about dividing grace, receiving a gift of grace, he talks about the same subject, calling it a measure of faith. Talk about the same subject. Romans 12. For I say to the grace of God given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I talk about the same thing because later he, he talks about what you do. He that exhorts, he that teaches, so forth. But it's, it's called a gift of faith because faith is how it is made to operate. Grace is what it is and the source coming from God. So grace, the grace of God is the enabler. Mm -hmm. The faith is, makes it, you become a doer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why where nothing is done, where nothing is being done, there isn't faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If there isn't faith, it is possible there's not grace. If there isn't faith, it is possible. That has to be established. First, you might say that faith that a person has been given correctly and precisely within the body of Christ he has been placed there by God. He's been placed with yeah. grace as a gift or with faith mm -hmm. that's designed to do this or that. Yeah. Okay. And the entire Godhead is in this matter of putting you into Christ. Mm -hmm. God himself puts you into Christ. Of God are we in Christ Jesus. First Corinthians 1.30 the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. And Jesus Christ, he comes, he dwells in our hearts by faith. Ephesians 4, 18. And the Spirit, he administers the gift. So when, you, when he says, walk in the Spirit, all right, the the part Paul said to Galatians was, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what you not do. But walk in the Spirit and you'll minister. <laughs> See? Because the Spirit is the admin, is the ministry. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 12. It is administered by the Holy Spirit. So here you got God puts you in the body. Jesus distributes the grace. The Holy Spirit administers the grace. Whole oh, God is involved now. So now your part is live close to Christ, walk in the Spirit, dwell in Christ, set your face on things above. That's your role. Stay in this stay in this sanctified area. If you get out of it, yeah. you'll not be able to use it, but you're going to be held accountable for not using it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a remarkable situation. That's one way that we minister by 
Grace. We, yeah. can, we minister grace by doing this too because as we we do these things then then we uh when we walk in the spirit and all we're ministering grace to the others yeah. that are that are uh, uh, yeah i think i think it would be more accurate to say christ ministers the grace through us we're like a like a vehicle through which it comes now i want to think of some of the less prominent gifts here and i want to show you how they apply to this very assembly here Think of the word, the word of wisdom. That's called a spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 8. The word of wisdom. Word here meaning the message. The word of wisdom is a wise message, an utterance of wisdom. It has to do with the purpose of God and something that person sees. It's a word of wisdom that is very appropriate for the time. All right, you think of that as some of the openings that you give. Think of that, Lord, some of the Lord's table meditations you give. Think of that, some of the introductions, some of the introductions of the messages, some of the introductions at night, some of the callings. Those can be words of wisdom. Amen. Word of wisdom is by its very nature is tends to be more brief. It's not a long exposition. It's a word of wisdom. Here's another one, a word of knowledge. It's a revelation of pertinent facts that may not be apparent to others. It is the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was a word of, that was a word of knowledge yeah. that John told Peter. Yeah. He didn't know who that was. It's the Lord. Some brother gives some insight. That, that's from God. Yeah, that's right. It's a word of knowledge, see? Word of knowledge. See how it applies to... Yeah. Kind of takes the myst mystical nature out of it. <laughs> very, very practical. How about this? The discerning of spirits. 1 Corinthians 12.10 Some people can discern. That didn't come from God. That is a word from God. That, that's a word from God for us to do, right now. And some people can discern that. So when the assembly, they assembly, they can deliver this word of discernment. And those of us that are sensitive, Lord, we perk up. Hey, that, that's right. I, I missed that. Yes, I can see that now. It's a word of discernment. Yeah. So you got this wisdom, knowledge, discernment. Very functional. Yeah. It's not like being an apostle or a prophet. Maybe not even like being a teacher. But these things have to be delivered. Amen. Sometimes God delivers. It just, it's just a word that he delivers. It's like a little salt. Poof, yeah. And it changes how people think. Just this just little yeah. <laughs> perspective. It could be called a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirits. These words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discernment of spirits, they like put a handle on the truth so you can... Get a hold of it. Now I'll give you a word of discernment from Paul. He said to the Galatians who left the one, remember they left God, he said, This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. I said, That's discerning the Spirit. <laughs> you didn't get that from God. Or how about to the Corinthians? He said, When you come together, it's for the worse. It was discernment, see? And a word of wisdom, and a word of knowledge, kind of all wrapped up in one. There might be a word, word gifted with mercy. They can detect, oh, that person stands in need of mercy, deliver a word, or they might just cradle the person in their arms and minister comfort to them. Why? Because they see it needs to be done. Ah, they recognize it needs to be done. One person might see the same person, say, he needs a little clout on the head, that's what he needs. Another person has the insight, he, oh, I think mercy will resolve this situation. And if I minister right, maybe he won't take this road down from mm -hmm. Jerusalem to Jericho, he may not be on this road the next time. Yeah. Now with all these measures of grace or spiritual gifts speak about the same thing, or measures of faith speak about the same thing. There's a corresponding ability of expression. And that's where the edification factor comes in. Because grace unexpressed can't edify. 
So with each measure of grace, God equips the person to effectively communicate that in words, and there is such a thing as deeds, which minister, which keeps his people in a condition where they're not overcome. It keeps them up on top of the water. See, from one point of view, life is like walking on the water. The main thing is stay on top, stay on top. So every once in a while, some of them start to sink. Now then all these myths kick into use to keep them up on the water, see? Well, this is good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, these are these are the practical ways Jesus ministers to his people. They're not the only way, I understand that, but it's a practical way. Yes? It's not the measure of faith that keeps you buoyant on that water. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, your personal faith does, yeah. Yeah. Your measure of faith is what you're able to. You're kept by the power of God through faith, all right? Yeah. That's... The measure of faith, that's your spiritual aptitude. That's what you're able to do in the body of Christ. And everybody is able to do something that is needed, that must be expressed. So now if you, if you were Satan, wouldn't you want to create an idea about the church where the mass of the people were kept down? Yeah. You knew this? Would, isn't that what you do? What I do, it, this is what any of you do. Let's, yeah. let's make the people think they, they don't have anything to do. Yeah. And that the, some other person will do their work for them. Let's, and once convinced of that, the line to heaven is cut off. There's still a personal and effective way to come to the throne of grace, to obtain grace to help in time of need. That's not the kind of grace we're talking about here. But the person who has these gifts, they'll use that. Yeah. They'll use that technique to strengthen their abilities. See, so that when, it's important when you come to the assembly, sometimes you come, you're beat up. I understand that. I've been, I'm that way myself. But that's not like the ideal uh -huh. <laughs> situation. You want to come, so the measure of faith or the measure of grace you've been given, there's no, nothing clogging the line from heaven to you or from you to the brethren. Yeah. You, you can have a clog down here or a clog up here. Amen. So get unclogged from heaven to you, unclogged from you to the brethren. Don't let anything rise between you and the brethren. Like a anger or hatred or just sort of, don't let that rise because that it clogs this. Line of communication. Well, that's our introduction to what's going to be said in this. <laughs> it's good stuff, isn't it? <laughs> and if you, any of you score, Brother Ricky? All these portions produce an independent, in a, in, interdependence, interdependence among the body. That's right. That's right. That doesn't accentuate the members. It draws attention to Christ because right. when Amen. you look at like all of these. Diverse gifts contribute to a single end. Mm -hmm. That's to right. the end that the body might be built up mm -hmm. in the faith. So that when you see that working through all these different gifts being operated, mm -hmm. that accentuates the administrator. Amen. The one who's doing the work. Who is the head? Because if there wasn't a head, all it would be is yeah. utter confusion. Chaos. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just like in Israel, see? That's right. it, Moses was a leader, but he wasn't the head. Yeah. Mordecai told Esther, uh, maybe it was for this reason you That's were raised right. up. But he said, if you don't do it, yeah. they'll get relief from somewhere else. But your house. But your house. But it, <laughs> it occurred to me, it's the same way in the, in the, in the assembly. That's right. The person, you know, they say, well, I, I've got to go there because it always does it through me. No, it, he's, he's going to use the members. That's right. All of them. Uh -huh. and, and so, you know, if I... If I and I was just thinking this in context. If I decide, well, I'm not going to go anymore and hurt them. No, see, it's not going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. It's not. He'll work through somebody else. He's going to minister to his church. That's but right. you'll you'll be hurt. That's, right. Right. That's for sure. Anyone else tonight? Yes, Mr. Melissa. The point that you brought out, um, I hadn't really thought about it. The Jews were a people, but they weren't a body. Yeah, body. That's very good. <laughs> so we see how Christ ministered to yeah. the body of Christ. 
Hear it again, see, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, there it is, live down again. <laughs> it's all there, you can see. Go ahead, Sister Barb. Thinking about this measure of grace and thinking of a shadow that was given in the Old Covenant of the children of Israel obtaining the land of promise. Mm -hmm. And before they, before they occupied the whole land, the boundaries were set out allotting each yeah. tribe a yeah. portion, yeah. a measure. Yeah. And it was dependent upon the size of the tribe, the ability of the tribe, how much they got in the promised land. But whenever all of that was determined, then they had to go and fight That's to right. possess all of that land. That's right. Amen. So it's yeah. like we're in, the, we're in the process of fighting to fill up that measure. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there were some people that in, the, in their experience, they found out the portion was too small. You yeah. ever? He said, "We got to have more. We got to have more room." Well, yeah, sure. the same thing will happen to like a Paul. He's like, "I got to have some more room here." Uh -huh. you know, and, and that being the case, that you've recognized a very valid truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brother Jeremy. Yeah, I was thinking about just, but to everyone, and I thought about how it doesn't say, "But to the most important one." Yes. Or, right. uh, just the one person that's is very gifted in this area and not the rest of you but to everyone that that just really um stuck out to me that there's not one person that's left out of this that's not that's not important that's right like brother bob said you know it, it's going to hurt the person if they're not going to be involved but it's needful that everyone mm -hmm. is involved amen and i can see how the um it's a master stroke of the devil to get people in a, in a situation where one person does everything, everybody else kind of spectators, well, that doesn't work like. Well, we've no. seen how it works; it doesn't work. Yeah, that's right. But see, this is not how the Lord's doing. He's making a body that's working perfectly together, and every part is needful. That's right. See what he said to everyone is given grace. He took away every excuse yeah. for non-activity. Yeah. yeah. The totally. Like the, uh, part, I, feel, I feel like we could click on this and open it up a whole lot more, but we talked about one eight and one four. Oh yeah, that's that's big. You know, God is He's get a little bit. We all we need is just a little bit of this. Yeah, and and it all yeah. it's all proportion. Amen. You know, because He's building this church. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, that's good. And men get involved. See, then it, it's no telling what's gonna come out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they distort the measures and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you could make a you could make a cake using a cup of salt and a teaspoon of flour, but we don't advise it. <laughs> Good on. Yeah. We talked about the the benefit it is to the entire body, and the glory it is to yeah. God. Yes. I mean, this is all. This yeah. is all accruing to it. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why Jesus said. They'll know you're my disciples when you have loved one to another. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, and this is this promotes that that genuine affection that brethren yeah. have yeah. to one another as we the different the several members are, are ministering back and forth and and filling those needs and and supplying the things that are necessary as Christ moves in them. You see Amen. Christ in them, and you actually you actually see. Of your your need of them, that that, that God has determined yeah. that's how it's going to be. But in the ministry of whatever your measure is, and whatever your gift is, I think you'll find that you're happiest when you're doing that's it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're trying to do someone else's, you know, you go, yeah. I like that grace for that better <laughs> because uh, that gets more attention, yeah. and so I'm going to do that. You don't. You, there's no satisfaction in that. Yeah. It's just it, it's frustration because these things can only be done in the power of of Christ as He administers it. But when you're doing what what He has given you to do, mm -hmm. there's there's a fellowship with Him in it. Amen. It's very satisfying. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, yes, Brother Judah. You're not disappointed by what you can do with God's grace. Amen. It yeah. has an eternal effect, and you can, you can always do according to the amount of grace that God's given you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll have a word of prayer then. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this revelation of how you work with Christ in His body. It's very refreshing to our spirits, 
It's encouraging. We see the need for it, and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen.